Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come as the wind and cleanse. Come as the fire and burn. Convert and consecrate our lives to our great good and your great glory. Amen. Today is a day for the riffraff and the cast-offs. Today is a day for the strangers and the slightly suspicious ones. This glorious last Sunday of May with the sun glimmering on the Seine. Today is a day when all of a sudden we are surrounded by people we don't know. The outsiders are suddenly inside. We have this vagrant band of choristers that wandered in here this morning. As a reward for finishing their exams and their degrees, don't think for a moment that we don't know why they came this morning. It was to take a photograph of themselves inside a church to send back to their long-suffering parents. (laughs) I really am on a working vacation. See, I told you. And we have a group of confirmands here, only some of whom are from the cathedral congregation. The others are from churches elsewhere in the convocation, churches that aren't even in France. This is what happens when we put our street address right on the website. (laughs) We even have people among us this morning who are not baptized. Can you imagine? I mean, what has happened to our standards? When did the usher stop checking for baptismal IDs at the door? Today is a day of outsiders, and that is exactly as it should be. Because today, the day of Pentecost, is the day we are confronted with the fact that the church, the church that is brought into being on this day by the coming of the Holy Spirit, is not our private possession. Did you grow up in a congregation like I did where we all wore red on Pentecost Day and we had a birthday party at coffee hour because it was the birthday of the church and the cake was ablaze with little candles, tongues of fire, one for every one of us who'd come in the door that day. One year I remember my mom making little tongues of fire out of yellow, orange, and red ribbon that we all safety pinned onto our lapels and our blouses. It was a happy, joyous occasion, and it was made all the more so because it usually coincided right about with the liberty that was the end of school. Just like this morning in my university town growing up, we had a babble of languages that read the gospel. But you know, looking back, It was more than a little uncomfortably about us. Celebrating the birthday of our church was a little bit like celebrating the birthday of our not-so-little elite prayer club. It was a party for us because, of course, the church was just for us. Except that's not the church Jesus decided to build. It's not the church that Jesus promised the Holy Spirit to us for. So think again about that first reading we heard Kim read, that story from the chapter of the Acts of the Apostles. St. Luke starts by setting the scene. The disciples are all gathered in a room in a house, all together in one place. They are probably trying to figure out just what on earth they should do next because it has been 10 days since they last saw Jesus as he disappeared in the clouds up on the mountain. What are they supposed to do now? And then comes the wind and the fire, and in a flash, suddenly, all of them are linguists. And they are speaking languages that they themselves wouldn't have understood just the day before. Now, stop right there for just a moment and ask yourself this question. What would we do if that happened here? What would we do? Now, we're we're the church in Europe. Many of us in this place already have command of a few languages, but what if all of a sudden, in a flash, on a Sunday morning, we heard ourselves speaking Dinka and Zosha and Nepali and Armenian and Georgian? I'll tell you what would happen. The vestry would form a committee. (laughs) We would talk among ourselves 
about what to do about it. Should we let anyone know? What if the prefecture finds out? Is there some way we could create a revenue stream by this? <laughs> of course, we would try to figure out what it meant for ourselves, because who could possibly know better than us? Huh? But that is exactly what doesn't happen in the Acts of the Apostles. The disciples are not the first ones to figure out why they've been given this gift. The first people who speak in the story, the very first voices that we hear on Pentecost morning are not even the main characters. The people who speak up and make sense of it all are the people who were outside the room. People who hadn't even been part of the Jesus movement, at least not yet. It took the world outside the church to tell the church what its gifts were for. It took the outsiders, the people who were searching and hoping, to tell those disciples that they had just become apostles. People sent to bear the message. People meant to go and share what they had found with the world outside. A church for other people is what the church learns it is supposed to be. My friends, we are not a church of the chosen. At least not if we are the church God needs. We are not a church of those who have walked the same walk we have, or think the same thoughts we do, or can satisfy us that they've been through what we've been through. They don't have to prove themselves to us. If we are the church God is calling us to be, we have to offer ourselves to them. Douglas, Arizona is a small town that sits right on the border of the United States and Mexico. There is a border crossing there. And so not very surprisingly, the, the Episcopal Church in Douglas, Arizona, a little mission church named St. Stephen's, for a long time has worked to offer ministry to migrants in that city, migrants who have crossed the border, not always with the most orderly paperwork. St. Stephen's is on the corner of 11th Street and D Avenue in Douglas, right next door to the First Presbyterian Church. It has stood there for 122 years. The Presbyterian Church came three years later. Both of those churches have been offering help to migrants caught up in the waves of desperation trying to get out of the gangocracies that run so much of Latin America. In fact, that whole block in Douglas is taken up by four churches. The other two are the United Methodist Church and the Baptist Church. But St. Stephen's, it's one of ours, you know. It's welcoming not just to the migrants, who come across the border, but to anyone, the gay and lesbian and trans community in southern Arizona, the Hispanic community that has made its home in Douglas for generations. It is a place at home in two languages and two cultures, something we know a little bit about here. It's open. It's a church for outsiders. On Wednesday of this past week, a man drove up to the church in broad daylight and parked his car just by the path that separates St. Stephen's from the church next door. And then he got something out of his truck. The security cameras caught all of that happening, but they lost track of him as he walked down that path toward the back of the church. And 15 minutes later, the cameras saw the smoke billowing out of that church. Five minutes later, it was coming from the Presbyterian Church, too. The roof of the Presbyterian Church was destroyed, but St. Stephen's was burned right down to the ground. When those people outside the room heard the good news of God's love in a language that they could hear, so many of them rejoiced. 
finally there was a message of hope that was open to everybody with no barriers, no exceptions, no disqualified people. But never forget, the story goes on to say that some of them sneered. Some of them could not bear the thought of a God whose love extended even to the people they despised. Whose welcome and affirmation was just as open to the outsiders as it was to them. What sort of God wouldn't hate the people that I hate? Certainly no God worth my time. That, sisters and brothers, that is the attitude of much of the world we are meant to serve. And I am sad to say that is the attitude of a shockingly large number of people who live under the mistaken notion that they are Christians. The resistance we face will be directly proportional to the openness of the welcome we offer. A church behind a gate is safe A ship in a harbor is safe, but that is not what ships are for. And it isn't what churches are for either. Someone tried to shut down the open doors of St. Stephen's by burning down that church. But even that did not work. They will gather again this morning for worship, and I will bet you that they'll have more people this Sunday morning than they have had for years. Antonio, Blondine, Jacob, Justin, Lily, Megan, children. These are your last moments of being outsiders. We're about to make insiders out of you. We here have learned that all of the gifts that all of us here have been given are meant to be given over for the single purpose of giving to others, sharing with others the hope we have found here. But understand this as you stand up among us today. Being a church that open to the people God insists on chasing after, being that church is hard. And we have come to believe that we will be better at it if we have you with us. So welcome. The door is open. Won't you please come in? Amen.